All right. So Ed O'Neill, this was the first interview we did for this show. And one of my all-time favorite episodes because of Ed and his charm and everything else. And David, before we get into that, didn't you have a technical issue? Oh, I had a microphone. It wasn't a microphone problem. It was a problem with me because it was our first one. And it was, I mean, this this one is our first one. So yeah. it's been, a, it, you know, the problem is it fell between my seats and I just found it the other the day. The recording so said, device? Oh yeah. Said we, we we're supposed it. to click record yeah. and it fell between the seats. And so your sound is just going over the computer. So it's a little distant. But well heard, right? <laughs> no, I found this whole episode in between my seats. So I said, oh, we should air this. We never aired this, Dana. And I said, <laughs> and so we know we have it. And Ed was, by, by the way, Ed, we both know him pretty well. Super cool guy. Was our first one. So it was experimental, but he jumped mm -hmm. right in, said, of course I want to do this. And we talked a little about SNL, but we mostly talked about how interesting his life is. I became fascinated yes. by, because I kind of had a sense he's an East Coast tough character and he almost played professional football and he was almost a made man like in a, a way. gangster, yeah. His, his forearms are Popeye forearms and there's a certain kind of power to him. He just doesn't need show business, but yeah. he's had married with children, he's had modern family, he's had this huge career, but he's so eccentric and he is an extremely intense Brazil, Brazilian jiu-jitsu yeah, guy. Yeah, he's like Black an belt. MMA guy, yeah. And, I called him after the podcast and we talked for an hour about the technique of that, of getting someone on their feet and laying your body, all, just, just to know really like a it. street fight, he, he'll take you in a second. It just shows you, you just never know. He's, he's built like a truck. He's like yeah. a Joe Rogan. I mean, he's tough. Like you don't want to get in a fight with him. No, no, no. You, 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 and he's oh, and he such would regulate nice on the set. Remember we talked about that? Which one? If somebody gets out of hand. Uh, yeah, he's the go-to guy. And uh, it's if unreal. somebody needs to be slapped around. But he has no ego about it. And he doesn't, he's not like a normal show business person. Mm. It's like it's something he does, he's great at. And he said he just lives one day at a time. I said, when you're getting famous, and he talks all about that. So, oh, he did Married with Children, too. Yeah, yeah. And he's so funny in that. So it was a really interesting interview. I would not click off right now if I were you. No. I click would on. stay tuned. Well, hey, that's what we do. Fly in the wall. Click on. Yeah. They're already on, but but just keep it on. Yeah. And okay, he's here gonna reveal some stuff that you've not seen and or heard in other podcasts or interviews. So enjoy Ed O'Neill. By the way, first of all, I want to hear Ed's story of when he met Lorne. Before the show alone, that never happens. Oh, oh, um, yeah. Well, you know the traditional thing, right? The dinner at the, that Italian restaurant in the in the theater district. Or so. Yeah, or so. No, but that's usually padded with cast. Like Tuesday night when we're writing and supposed to be writing. No, this was go. like this was like Wednesday or Thursday, and he he wanted to have uh, you know take me to dinner and you know bring your wife along. Mm -hmm. Hungry. So, we went downstairs and, uh, you know, it was the three of us and, uh, it was great, you know, good food, but we, we didn't have anything to talk about. I mean, he didn't want to do anything. He didn't want to get near married with children. You know, that was like, forget that. So he was trying to figure out what to do with me, which was basically, you know, nothing. I mean, it was like, well, I said, just throw me in skits with some of the the people, you know, just throw me in. And that's what he did. And that, that's, that's what happened. But it was very, I mean, usually I can think of something to talk about, but I had a difficult time with Lauren. Well, that Orso is tough. We, I would go, I would be assigned because I was sort of like the class clown. I, everyone hated writing on Tuesday. And that was usually the dinner that I went to. And then Marcy would come around and go, Lauren, once you go to dinner. And I'd be with my legal pad, huh? And it would take you out of writing because it's right in the heart of the eight to 10, right? Yeah. And yeah, then yeah. he wants you, he wants Dana, he wants Mike Meyer. You know, he'd just go around and pick and choose. And then they would say no because they could. And I'd have to say yes because I was newer. Yeah, that was a very interesting experience. I can't say I liked it. It was, it was. Um, I can't say I liked it. <laughs> I didn't like it. I, no, I didn't like it because first of all, I didn't like cue cards and I didn't like uh the, the whole process of the first show and then they you know you you're, you get together with the, you, you guys and you you know yeah. trying to get their bit in and you hate to tell them what you know well which one do you like do you like uh david's better than dana's or you know yeah and you're uh, what 
Luckily, they do that behind closed doors. They they take the host just for for the people at home. By the way, I wasn't on when Ed was there. I don't think. I think Dana was. I was. You did Wayne's World with us. That's right. That's oh. right. Oh, yeah, I did, and that wasn't so bad. And that crushed, and then, and then we <laughs> that and destroyed. Then I, did, I did a thing with uh, uh, the girls. You know, I I forget which ones. The it. Sweeney sisters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah was the, Jan, exactly. Really, yeah. Jan Hooks, Nora Jan Dove. Hooks. I yeah. actually thought they were funny, how uh, very funny. Yeah, and then Sweeney, Sweeney funny. Sisters is funny. I like that one. Yeah, and and then I did something with. Uh, oh, I can't remember them all. I mean, I mean, it was Lovitz was around. <laughs> well, did, that was you, did you do last a season penis sketch or yeah. no? Is that a rumor? No, no. We did a thing on 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 the uh, the tyrant that was in uh, what country? You know, oh god. Y- yeah, so it was Noriega. Was I the church lady in that? And no, it wasn't Noriega. It was. Oh no, it wasn't Noriega. To he- but but Lovitz played the dictator, right? Hello? No, the dictator. no. The dictator was dead in a coffin, and we were standing. <laughs> oh, over <the> <laughs> okay. And, and, I'm uh, getting and everybody, warmer. <laughs> everybody was pretending they were upset, you know, with this murderous, you know, fucking guy. It was actually kind of funny. I mean, it really it was. But I just didn't. I just felt like an eight ball, you know, like why am I here, you know? And I think I was just there because Mark said, "Put him on the show," you know. Yeah, you're famous. That's your fault. And he talked like that when he was 28. Put him on the show. Mark. He's a good guy. Mark. You know what? This, one of the reasons in a philosophical quasi serious thing is that I don't know if SNL was unintentionally sometimes a live reality show because you're taking Wayne Gretzky and saying, hey, do 10 live comedy sketches, hockey man, <laughs> yeah. with cue cards yeah. and no rehearsal. Yeah. The one that, because I hosted it after being a cast member and it was awful. You're just in so many things. You're pulled so many yeah. ways yeah. and it's just a yeah. blur. But so you could feel better, Ed. I've been in the slats during the commercial break and seen Michael Jordan, the Michael Jordan, kind of like... uh Okay, uh, what are we going to do here? You know, I said, just look at the car. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. Christopher, Christopher Walken ignored the protocol. So when he was first hosting, he just, I'm in, I, I'm the church leader. So I'm looking at him. He never looked at me. He just looked straight at the card and never moved his head <laughs> and read it directly off the cards. And it was perfect. You know, no, he, no, was, on, he was on the week yeah. after me. He oh, came in. That, was that, he? Remember, we, we tell, you tell that story. I was, I wasn't there, but. You know, when he when uh, uh, Lauren asked him, what he, you know, if he had anything he thought was funny, yes. and the thing about the bears, bears are funny. Likewise, bears suits. Bears, bears are funny and bears as well. And if you break it down, it's brilliant. His brain went a bear. Uh, yeah. funny, circus bear. Oh, yeah. But a guy in a bear suit is funny as well. But I remember when he came <laughs> in, he goes, saw it O'Neill. Never look at the cards. Just look at them the whole <laughs> yeah. time. Never move your head. Well, he That's had that brilliant, that brilliant bit about Mr. Mr. Belvedere, whatever that was, that guy. All oh, the- right, walking around. Was that yeah. the Continental? Yeah, yeah, yeah Mr. Yeah, Continental. Kind of I thought that was great. Point of view. Yeah. Yeah, but Chris is just, Chris is, he's, he's, he's great. He's out there. I did a movie with them years ago. I did Dogs of War with uh, Tom Berenger and Chris Walken, and I was one of the mercenaries, you know, and. It was it wow. was fun. It was fun. Listen, he's sweet. He's just so different, oh, Chris. He's just, I love he's, the guy. Do you have time yeah. for a quick story, Ed? I'll tell you when you're done with your story. Yes, uh, <laughs> I had a thing with Chris. Uh, I was on my way to play handball at the West Side Y, West Sixty Third, and he was. It was like a Monday. All right, so eleven a.m. He's coming down the street, you know, with that hair and. The coat, you know, and he's str- the big strides. And I had just read a review. <laughs> he had been doing Hamlet at Stratford, and he got pretty good reviews. I mean, the play itself, they said, you know, it's not great, but he may have a Hamlet in him. So I, you know, <laughs> and I had done Dogs of War with him, so we stopped each other, and he said, you know, we're 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 dark today. I'm, I'm going to go get a drink. You know, why don't you join me? I said, it's 11 a.m. I have a handball game. Well. All right. I said, I just read the reviews pretty well. He said, well, you know, when you do Shakespeare, you got to do that thing, you know, that thing for them. But, you know, the critical faculty, they like to hear that the thing. I said, oh, yeah, yeah, right. You know, what's he talking about? What thing? <laughs> what thing? He said, yeah, but I refuse. I refuse. I won't give it to them. 
fuck them in their asses. And do I not look Danish? I said, you do look Danish. There you are. There you are. Fuck them. And away he went. <laughs> and away he went. He was just, you know, that. he was just a, a, a free spirit all the way around. He was, I, I oh, love yeah. him. Yeah. And Joe Pesci was the same kind of interesting character off screen. Cause I remember him telling this long story. He goes, you know, you got to know when, when do you want to fight? You know, when do you, when are you going to fight? It's just a non sequitur. I say a sugar bowl across the nose. <laughs> a know, sugar bowl across, from, he, from that West 63rd <laughs> street. Why? You know? Yeah, and, uh, and he would take, so he was a tough guy. It, it, well, he was, and he was five two. You know, <laughs> it wasn't and, a difficult step <laughs> to play New York gangsters. No, I don't know what the fuck I'm no. gonna do playing a tough New York gangster. No. Look at me. No, I always <laughs> said that about those guys. I said it's thank God they weren't born in Cleveland or you know, I mean, yeah. none of them would have worked. You know, but <laughs> because it was New York, you know, they're doing the New York thing. Yeah, I t- I did it with Pesci, and we did a movie together, and uh, and then he. Either I was with him or he did this on his own or this is a total lie. But he was he was sitting and uh, he was telling me what he doesn't like because he goes, I don't like autographs. I don't like all that shit. And I go, yeah. And then he goes, this guy last night at dinner goes, hey, Joe Pesci at the other table, which we all get. Hey, man. And he goes, hey, you know. And then he goes, hey, come here to the table. Come here. And he goes, what the fuck do you say to me? The guy goes, come here. He goes, come here. <laughs> Fuck you and fuck your mom. <laughs> fuck you. You want to be a man? You walk over my table and ask if you're allowed to talk to me. I was like, and now I, I do that. That's where I picked it up. <laughs> what, you, what am I like a clown doing? Exactly. Music? It was That's like that. Exactly. Am I a fucking? How am I funny? How am I? Oh, fucking that was great. Funny? That was great. That was great. Yeah, he yeah, he that. uh he used to work in this restaurant. I think it was in Queens. It was an Italian joint, and that's where. Scorsese had seen him in, or De Niro, or both of them had seen him in this thing called The Death Collector with Joe Cortese. Remember Joe Cortese? Mm-hmm. It was like a, a B movie, but they liked Joe in it. And they were thinking of him mm-hmm. for the brother, Raging the Bull. Raging Bull. Yeah. So they called him, and he, it was a busy night. He was, he was a Mater D or something out there. It was a wise guy joint. Go figure. Love and he it, he <laughs> said, "What? Are, who is it?" He said, "It's it's Bobby De Niro." Go, yeah, tell Bobby go fuck himself in his ass. And then he kept working. <laughs> Everything's in the ass. Back. Yeah, he called him back. I remember. I, I, I remember being at the Columbus Cafe with Lovitz, and we were just fresh off yeah. the boat in New yeah. York City, and we're there with all these Goomba guys, oh, right? Yeah. Paulie Herman, goes, all those guys. Yeah, and his friends. And Lovitz says to one big guy, he goes. What do you do for a living? <laughs> and the guy goes, "What do you want to know for? What do you yeah, want to exactly. know why I fucking do for?" Exactly. No John's like, "Sorry, the fuck is it to you? I didn't know." <laughs> oh man, I was in. I was in. There was this Irish bar restaurant, Jimmy Neary's, on uh, the East Side, like around 59th or 57th. I forget. But I used to go in there sometimes, and it was a you know a lot of these detectives, retired detectives, hung out there, mostly Irish. And I was because I was doing uh, Big Apple for David Milch. And I was uh, partnered with this young actor. So we're in there with a bunch of guys. And this one cop was driving us around. He was a retired detective. And he says, uh, you know, we're just talking. He says, you see that guy at the bar over there? That's <laughs> driver. I said, Jimmy Coonan, you're the guy that was what had, had, you know, he ran the Westies. Yeah, well, he's doing life, you know, but this guy was his driver, this prick, I don't like him. They used to go down to this. And, and anyway, the guy's at the bar smoking. He just got out. And I look around and my partner, this young actor, is over there because he also liked to write. He's, he's chatting this guy up, you know, at the bar. And I thought, oh, that could be a big mistake, you know. So I, I kind of went over and the guy knew me because, you know, I was there. I used to live in, in that area, you know, a Hell's Kitchen that was called Clinton at the time. And he says, hey, hi, Ed, how are you? I didn't know him. I said, good, what's up? I said, uh, Mike, you know, we're, our, our food's coming. Apparently, he had asked the guy, you know, listen, I, I heard you drove for Jimmy Coonan. And, uh, yeah. you deep. know, I'd like to maybe write something. Could you, you could help me out? We'll write a thing. It'll be great. And the guy's smoking a cigarette. You know, he's just looking at him. He says, you know, that was a long time ago. 
lot of people don't need to know about this, you know. <laughs> you certainly don't need to know about it. Jesus, terrifying. It's like that. Hey, O'Neill, go back. Uh, nice to see you. Tell that fucking donkey you're with that I fucking hate him. It was the cop, you know, that said, they pointed <laughs> about. I mean, they all know each other. You know, it's just like a, it's like a little, it's a it's neighborhood. Terrifying, though. I just was so curious about, you know, you being a trying out for the Pittsburgh Steelers yeah, yeah. and you being a black belt in Jiu Jitsu. Yeah, so, yeah. like, they could all sit on boxes or whatever, <laughs> wear puffy jackets, but you would be the guy who could actually, yeah. from that neighborhood, well, take well, care you know, of I mean, I'm just truth, saying, right? The truth of my life has been that, you know, when I came from Youngstown, which was a steel mill town, and I grew up with wise guys, you know, their fathers, my friends were their fathers, and um, you know, there's a lot of stories there. Like they wanted me to get in at one point. Not, not I could never be made, you know, because I was Irish. Right. But they wanted me to hang out. And, you know, after I got cut by the Steelers, they wanted me to, you know, strong arm a few guys. I always said no. Yeah. Because I, I said, I can't go to jail. I can't go to jail. So, but I knew all these guys. It was, I grew up with them. At your peak physicality, like with the Steelers, I mean, what? How, how much did you weigh? You're like six two, and like what? Yeah, were you, I was like six what two, your... maybe two twenty five. Yeah, so yeah, with with big forearms. He was the early Joe Rogan. <laughs> um, now, <laughs> I, uh, Popeye, uh, yeah, Popeye I to, forearms. I mean, you know, it was it's what I did. All, you know, it's what you did if you grew up there and you had any kind of physicality. I read football. right about Pittsburgh Steelers on, on your Wikipedia, but. I didn't really believe it because it's also on my Wikipedia. <laughs> but it said you're from Youngstown, Ohio. And I go, is this just a sexy rumor? Because I, my parents went to Denison. Is that really a school? Or are they making this up? Is there no, a place it's called a school, Denison? but it's not, it's not in Youngstown. It's up near Akron, I think. Okay, yeah. It's my mom's from around Cincy. There, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she said she went to school. I don't totally believe her. And then my dad said he went to the same one. And that story didn't really check out because... It was the same school, and I thought he was just piggybacking on her story. So, uh, if there is a Denison, then that's good because now no, I no, there uh, is a Denison, and, okay. and it was it's a nice little private school, I think. Okay, uh, good, that's good. So there, okay. yeah, I went I went to OU for a while. I went to Ohio U, and I I sort of flunked out of there, and then I got back <laughs> to Youngstown. State and, not a you genius. Know, not a genius. Not a genius. <laughs> I, I didn't all like of us so bad. All of us. So, Ed, I mean. Yeah. The, I don't think there's anybody who has a, a more of a regular guy persona than you. Like, yeah. there's no pretense. Like, literally nothing. No. I mean, you know, 40 years of, of television. <laughs> I mean, just like, you could be just anybody. It's it's really No cool. star quality. Like, I just, None. Uh, I still know, want it. to go back to this idea <laughs> that if you wouldn't suffer fools. You're so nice, but... This East Coast physicality you have. I, it, w did you ever, were you ever on a set where you thought, I'm going to... I'm going to set this guy down. I'm going yeah. to choke him out or I'm not going to take this shit. I mean, I think you're the kind of guy who's incredibly nice until he's not nice. Yeah, that's and right. You don't want to ever meet but, that other guy. I mean, ever. I've said that a few times because I've said, look, guys, everyone thinks I'm such a nice guy. I'm not. I mean, I have been <laughs> very violent in my life. I mean, I, not, love not to, I, never, I never pulled a gun and shot or knifed a guy, but I right. was I was always you know, I, I, I didn't run away from those troubling things when you're young. Like I do. Well, I run like away from everything. People, like most people should, David, you know. Yeah. I mean, I'm honestly lucky that I'm, you know, didn't have a lot more trouble than I did. I'm what's known on the streets as a colossal pussy. <laughs> you, you fought with your wit. I fought with money. Friends, I made friends with the guy named Steve Lee in fifth grade. The big kid, he was my enforcer. You know, I had yeah, my yeah, yeah, I was I had kind of that it. guy for a lot of uh, uh, you would have oh, been I would have been your best friend. Yeah, a lot also, of the my other friends thing is Irish. Who, yeah, they needed a little help every now and then, and I was always happy to because I always I always dislike bullies. I had a thing about yes. bullies, and I had a little routine I used to do in bars, like you know, if somebody I mean I'm making this up, right? But someone comes up and says, Hey, you got a cigarette, give me a cigarette. You know, not nice. And you got right. it right there, you know. On the on the bar, and I'd say, um, yeah. you know, how many do you want? Give me a couple then. I said, okay. Uh -huh. Here, here you go. You got a match? Yeah. Can I light it for you? Yeah. <laughs> and I'd just be like, like I'd act like I was afraid of them, and I just draw them in, you know, draw them in. 
give them more room, you know, give them more space to feel like they <laughs> For their got tough me. guy routine. And I'm just waiting to drop the hammer on them. You know, mm. I would just get an angle. I'd move over, get a little angle. You know, we're sitting on bar stools. <laughs> so you get Love a little it. angle. Love it. And then you might say, uh, how's that cigarette? Is it good? And then I point in and boom. I, you know, oh, I, Jesus. <laughs> I just, the, I just wanted to do it. I know? love this <laughs> side of you. To do it. But, but Ed, let me ask you a question. And I put David in here too. Uh, we're kind of scrappy. We have a lot of anger. Yeah, like yeah. we both sure. had really weird childhoods. Well, your comics. And, and Ed, I'm Irish, and I do think that the Irish brain. I don't know. You know the gangs of There's New no York. The Irish gangs. It. We're suicidal if we someone pushes like, you, do you want to fucking die right now? You know what it is. You know what it is, Dana. Yeah. I think what is it's that, that border thing? You know where yeah. we come from, the DNA, the Scotland, mm -hmm. Ireland. That's the, me. They're, they're oh. living up in the. You know, they don't plant. They, it was all limestone, so they had sheep. Yeah. You could steal mm -hmm. sheep. You know, you can't steal. Yeah. Apples too well. Yeah. So they were always that. That's all those guys that went down into the Ozarks. You know, the, mm -hmm. those feuds, you know, the, the McCoys and the, they were all from there and they, they, the, they, yeah. they murdered yeah. you not for any kind of like you robbed me. You insulted <laughs> me. Now I'm going to kill yeah. you. No, I'm going to kill you, man. You insulted me. Yeah, I have relatives in Ireland right now, and they, talking to them growing up, uh, my wife's nephew, boy, he's just fighting every day yeah, yeah, in yeah, Dublin, yeah, yeah. street yeah. poor. I mean, that was People part of the reason nice. I finally left. I mean, no, I wanted to, I, it's a whole long, crazy story how I started doing acting, but I needed to get out of Youngstown because, you know, I realized mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to die here. You know, I may die violently here or I'm just going to... Mm -hmm die on the vine, you know, in a bar drunk someplace. And uh, right. So I realized I had yeah. to get the fuck out of there because it was, a, yeah. you know, at the time I didn't really realize how dangerous a place it was. It was a very da dangerous. I've place been there. there. It's terrifying. <laughs> it's, I, I, you're like, I got to get out of here to a different bleak town. <laughs> yes. Blue collar tough. And no matter you know. where you go nearby, it's the same thing. You know, Steubenville, Akron, Canton, Maslin. It's all <laughs> yeah. the same thing. You got to get yeah. way the hell out of there. I, I, I'm there and, there and I hear a lot of, hey, sissy boy. I'm like, oh, me? But I was there to do a, a gig. I played a casino there. <laughs> and, you know, Ed, this might be uh, a little heavy, but when I played Youngstown, it sounds sort of elitist. But when you do a casino gig in some of these towns, I didn't really notice it. But sometimes towns aren't doing well. And there was yeah. a lot of boarding up. And then you get to this oh, beautiful casino. And all you think in your head is, this is where all the money's going. Like everyone yeah. gets a check and yeah. they go to the casino and it's just like, fuck, I'm part of the problem. I'm playing the casino. I don't know where I'm going. I'm in Youngstown. I go, oh, my parents are from here, allegedly. And, um, <laughs> and then I go and then I go, oh my God, I'm part of the problem. Here I am. And they're like all gambling and there's a lot of those little scooters. And I go, these poor towns, there's a million of them like that. Oh, there's so many of them. And, and you know, they're all trying to get lucky because- Really? Yeah, it's, I mean, I, it. David, I don't know. I, I've often told people, I said, they say, oh, well, you know, you got you got out and you were you're so successful now. And and I said, I'm so lucky. I mean, I don't know what my odds would have been. I didn't yeah. even get to New York till I was 31. You know, when I was cut by the Steelers, my father said, you're going to try what now? <laughs> Get in the fucking middle. What the fuck's wrong Concussion with you? Concussion protocol. Yeah, yeah I was, took a few hits. My dad was a real tough guy. You know, my dad was a really physical, uh, nice guy, by the way. But again, that triggered. So Dana's, kind of, same thing. Yeah. I had the same thing. We, I had, you know, I'm five kids, three older brothers pounding me all day long. My dad would, uh, he, if he thought you did something wrong, you had to go get his belt. Then he would snap it. Humiliating. And you had to grab your ankles Jeez. and their sibling, siblings would gather around <laughs> and say, how many? And then as he started to beat you, he would scream at you. Oh, oh Jesus my. Christ. You got... So <laughs> it made me, it made me tough. What I'm interested in Ed, right now is did your father live to see your incredible success? Yeah. And if so, what? how did your relationship change with him? And when you got Good all one. that, I mean, what what was that like with your well, dad? Well, we had, you know, he retired and he moved down to North Carolina on the Outer Banks where my mother, my mother and father divorced, had a sister who was schizophrenic.
schizophrenic and um, there were five of us. Okay. So the youngest sister was schizophrenic. So my mother took her mm. to North Carolina where my sister lived with her husband. I'm lost. And then my father retired and he wanted to move down there. He had a little house that he had, that we had to talk him into getting like a vacation home, a little small. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, my whole family ended up down there, you know, not me because I was in New York, but uh, then I had to sort of navigate, you know, uh, I heard you bought your mother a car. I'm driving a piece of shit. <laughs> Here it comes. I'd have to buy him a car. Yeah. I heard you bought her a house with a fucking swimming pool. The fuck do I look like? You know, I said, Dad, that's you're crazy. living with another woman. You're, you know, I mean, it was a it was a mess, but that, that's um, dicey. So he did not cozy up like my dad. Cause I was the one he really had it in for cause they wanted a girl. They yeah. got me <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and they named the girl's name. So, you know, <laughs> so he thought maybe I was a little, you know, whatever no. I had, I had an whatever. angelic yeah. Yeah. face. I was very boyish, but after I left and had success, it was like, Oh, Dane, you and I were the same person. You're always, I always supported you. I gave you everything. You know. Anyway, well, I was the oldest. It. I was the oldest of five, and my name is okay. the same as my father's. You know, except our middle name's different. But so I was sort of his favorite. You know, and and again, I was I became that guy that he wanted me to be, which was a, a pretty tough guy, an athlete. Mm -hmm. And my second mm -hmm. brother was uh, well, I probably well, he was my second brother's gay, so he went oh, to the God. seminary to be a priest. And mm -hmm. then four years and dropped out. That's a whole other thing. And then I had uh, another brother who was a good, great kid. Who's it, it kind of tragic. He died young. Then my my youngest sister died. Then my father died. And my mother died. Then my father died. Wow. So it was kind of a you know uh, crazy crazy shit. But um, Jesus, wow. Yeah. So my was, dad was a uh, deadbeat dad, kind of in a when. When that's where all my anger comes out. I got in a fight in sixth grade with this guy named Oscar, and uh, he, uh, <laughs> I was, I was at the little league game just chatting up some gals, and he came behind me and rabbit punched me. Oh. I was like, first of all, it's illegal, but I didn't say anything about that. But I turned around, <laughs> and well, then it's a sucker punch. Yeah, sucker, sucker punch. punch. And then surprisingly, Spade didn't go down on that. I was just like, huh? And then he goes, come on, man, let's go. And I'm like talking to these girls, go, I'm with some ladies, but meanwhile. It was you haven't changed. I have, yeah, haven't I was, changed. I was, I was kid, like, just talking, and then I was, but it was ten percent white in the crowd, and so everyone gathers on. I go, and they're like, "Fight!" I'm like, "No, no, no, there's no fight here," <laughs> you know. And then, and then I go, "Nice to see everyone." I'm going to take off, and I go, "I got to get out of here." It hits me again on the way, and I go, mm. uh, "So then I walk across the gravel to my friend's mom's car. I go. I feel like the manly move is to get in their car and lock the doors and hide until the game's over. And then maybe they'll all go away. And then I get to the door and it was like slow motion. Good junk. It was locked. Oh, and no. And it was an old Chevelle. And I go, motherfucker. <laughs> and I turn around and I go, because he hit me three times at this point. And I was looking like a big fool. And I turn around and I go, I, and here comes my dad left me all my anger. I'm looking humiliated. And then he tries to be cool and does a little rope a dope, like look around. He swings his hand up and then jabs me in the face, and that was it. And I laid a barrage on him, and I backed him up, and I kept hitting, and he fell, and I jumped on him, and I started wailing on him. And then someone grabbed me, and he stood up and goes, "Coach is coming." Coach wasn't coming, <laughs> and uh, and he ran off, and everyone wow. said he won. I won, but, <laughs> but I I I. I still talk about this fight it, it rarely comes up maybe twice a week but i uh i, I tell everyone about <laughs> i it. heard it this morning <laughs> you know, that, did you guys you remember seeing that cartoon when when i was a kid it was a, it was it was a disney thing i think it was called it was a short but it was called lambert the friendly lion did you you guys ever see that and i'm oh, 36 no, I, if you never saw like, it yeah. and i it's tell you this back. story because you guys should should get it you can google it lambert lambert, lambert the lion the friendly lion and what happened was yeah, long story short down. in a in a sheep there was a shepherd and sheep on a hillside and one night the stork makes a mistake and drops a baby lion in amongst the sheep oh. and the mother a mother who didn't have any sheep you know, takes the lion in 
And nice. so he's raised as a sheep. And a lot, again, he's, he's like a sheep. He's afraid of the wolf. The wolf comes by. They're all terrified. The mm-hmm. fucking lion is full grown. He's shaking, you know, this wolf. But the, the, the kicker was that the wolf backs the mother out on a precipice where she can't go anywhere. And he's got, he, the wolf's going to kill her. And all of a sudden you hear this fucking roar <laughs> just behind the wolf. Yeah. And the wolf's, the wolf's <laughs> hair goes up, you know, and he turns around. It's this salivating fucking killer male lion, you know. It's just great. It's just great. It. It's like that. That's what reminds me. That was me. Story. That was you. You got yeah. pushed to where. You know, you'd rather take a beating. Like my father used to tell me when I was a kid, look, if you get pushed into it, never back down. It's better to take a beating because the beating will heal. The back down the other thing stuff, will never yeah. go away. My dad told me there's some shit I won't eat. Mm-hmm. And he goes, believe me, Davey, I eat shit every day. I eat shit at work. I eat shit at home. Your mom gives me shit. Yeah, and yeah, he goes, yeah. But now and then he goes, I can't take it. And he goes, that's what happened to you. You couldn't take it. Well, go, yeah, your couldn't. father was quite a character. Those stories on your dad. Yeah, are- they're so hilarious. And uh, that's why. That's yeah. one thing I would. Thanks, Dad. Meanwhile, you're probably the reason I got beat up and I'm a pussy. But thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Ed, people, you, you're rich. He's rich. <laughs> no, I know he's rich. But um, how long was it between you did Married with Children? And then how long was it between that and Modern Family? Well, it was uh, 86 to 96 or and a half or what, something like mm-hmm. that. And then then there was that interim where I did like. Uh, Dragnet. I did Dragnet. I, I did. Uh, the two series with David Milch, you know, I did Big Apple, oh, right. I did, uh, the surf movie, the, the dysfunctional surf family down in San Diego. You, do you think, I think he's got Bezos money now. I think it's more like you're going to open a rocket ship company because all that first pile of money and then another pile of money. Well, it's, I, I looked at it cause I had to add it up. <laughs> it, <laughs> you had to add it up. Because I think Abacus. it's a Guinness Guinness Book of World Records, probably <laughs> uh, 459 episodes between Married with Children wow. and Modern Family. And I, my question for Ed is when you dream, <laughs> do, you, do you dream as Ed Bundy or you dream as Jay Pritchell? I don't dream as either one. But, you oh, know, okay. the funny thing is I remember when that, that happened and I got a phone call from one of the news agencies. I didn't know about it. And they said, you just eclipsed Lucille Ball's um, oh, okay. record of shows, you know, for her, you know, how many. She- of mugging? She had of done like, it too big? whatever it was. I was like one, one above her. <laughs> and I said, uh, I said, okay. Okay. So what do you think about that? I mean, isn't that amazing? And I said, well, it's, it probably should have been a crossword puzzle question. <laughs> But it, you're not, not saying I was better than Lucille Ball, are you? You're no. saying I did one more show. <laughs> <laughs> Present date, I've done one more show. So, yeah. Did, did you? Present. I mean, how, like, say you're first the pilot or the first episode of Married with Children. Yeah. And this is your first big star. Of the oh, show, yeah. Yeah. First. Which I, I love that show. It's so loose yeah. and weird and you're all great. You know. How, what was the guy walked off that show? I mean, how much did you change like as an actor or performer or you got wealthy, you got famous. I mean, that's such a tsunami in a, in a life, you know, and you're married. And I mean, it's just, yeah. it's intense. I mean, were you nervous? Uh, you know, it, the it, 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 kind of, it kind of like was a, it, it, it kind of happened in waves, you know, like the first three years, I think we were just trying to survive. We didn't, we couldn't believe we were going to be on another season. Cause they would go, up, Yeah. Yeah. And then they slowly started picking us up for like, you know, I don't know, five years, I think was the biggest pickup. And then uh, I thought, well, you know, that's good. I mean, we don't win anything, but we're, we're running, you know, we're running and, and we're keeping Fox in the black, which was kind of good for them and us. And uh, I just thought of myself like, wow, I'm, this is really luck. You know, this is lucky. And um uh, I never thought much about it. Honestly, I, I wasn't, um, I would, I would, I always have this kind of like one track thing where it's like, what's this week? You yeah. know, what are we, doing? Where, let me see the script. Okay. Right. What's next week. I didn't even, you know, when I got that, I, I never, 
I never thought about it much. I don't and know why. I, it starts out very humbly, doesn't it? I mean, did you kind of break even your first year between housing costs? Well, I mean, what happened SNL, was just I, I wasn't making it. I think I was yeah, making. Yeah, SNL, you never make money. Yeah. 12, yeah. I think I was making 12.5 an episode the first couple of years. And so then I, I, met with, 3, I met with Bernie. I met with Bernie, right? And, Bernie Bernstein, the famous talent yeah. man. Yeah, it was Jim, Jim Wyatt, because I was with ICM, and Jim ICM. Wyatt arranged this yeah. thing. And I said, um, you know, I don't want to be impertinent, but what do I need you guys for? You know, I've got, I've got a show. <laughs> I've got a show that's running. And, and then I you leaned pay, over and got an angle on Bernie. And Good why day. do I have to pay you now, too? I've already got the show. And Bernie, you know how Bernie was, you know, that's a good question. He said, uh, you know what, though? What if I told you that the uh, next door neighbor is making a lot more money than you are? Would that surprise you? I said, yeah, it would. Well, Bernie, Bernie, Bernie was pretty honest. He came out in the press and said, anybody who gives 20 percent of the salary, salary away is out of their fucking mind. <laughs> yeah. And Brad Gray had to meet with him and go, Bernie, we got to take it easy uh, with this stuff. Yeah. And Brad, uh, Brad was in the room. And then I think the upshot was Bernie said, OK, this is the deal. Um, you come with me. You're going to make a shitload of money. You're going to have a good time, and I'm going to teach you the business. And uh, I said, uh, you know, I was doubled up. I mean, I, there was my agent. Yeah. And I, I said, well, here I am. I'm, I'm you know, I'm yeah. given to him. Mm -hmm. So I said, sure, fine. And I he always said you can make a shitload or just a load. Well, I never felt they knew what to do with me, ever. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 every job I ever got with them i basically got on my own <laughs> because you know no because what i mean is that they do creative management no no what i mean is it, it was like like you guys had 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 uh, shows that they created for you right kind of sure, I mean, yeah they, they you know ownership of saturday night live david they they, they created a show around you they yeah. knew how to do that for certain people they just didn't know. I don't believe they knew how to do it for me because they didn't really know what I was. You know, I wasn't a stand-up comic. I never did stand-up. I wasn't even a comedic actor when I got married with children, although I had mm -hmm. done comedy in the theater. But they didn't know that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so they didn't know what to do with me. I, I, and I, I, don't blame, I don't blame them, by the way. It's like, uh, it was, I, I'm like a difficult, I maybe a difficult uh, sell you know who would be the easiest sell of a actor comedian coming into a agent's man manager office in the 80s would it have been like kevin costner or something or, or harrison ford in 1980 eddie you know, murphy leading man well eddie murphy for sure because he was uh, you know he was sexy yeah and he was funny uh, uh brilliant it's gotten me pretty far chris walken chris walken's hilarious uh, yeah, but again, uh, nobody he's knew hard that. too. Yeah, he's yeah, hard because he's so Chris peculiar. You know, when he did nobody Deer knew. Hunter, that wasn't funny. I think people discovered Chris was funny <laughs> and decided he was funny. Yeah. Yeah. Mao. No, I was I was the same thing. I wasn't a leading man. I don't know how to act. I'm kind of funny. I you know, where do you put me? You know, I'm just glad I live long enough for this digital technology that this is my job. I mean, said Sid, Sid Caesar would have had one of these. Oh God. Yeah. Sid Caesar was one of my favorites. Brilliant. Oh, yeah, I yeah. met him. Did you ever Sid, meet ever meet Sid Caesar? I never met him. I, I, I was in the room with him a couple times, sort of where he was, uh, uh, but I didn't meet him. I wish I could I tell had. I, I he was it was intimidating. It was at an airport, and he goes, "Oh yeah, you're on that show." He goes, "How many shows you do a season?" Uh, Twenty. Yeah, we did we did fifty five. <laughs> you know, he's like, he yeah, did, that's he how he was. You know, he was. <laughs> I, I don't think he was any day at the beach, you know, and he was a big, ah, strong guy. I love that term. He was a big, strong guy, too. When he was young. Yeah. Uh, he was a he was a he was a, a scary guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, but my God, he was funny. Yeah. You know, I don't think anybody has ever done that. Uh, that talk that, you know, what, what do they call it? You know, where he speaks in a language and it's not a language. Oh, yeah. The fake. I can do it, but he's the best. He's, he's the, the best. best. Like his, 
his samurai, you know, the Belushi took the Belushi stole from him. Really? His samurai was better than anything you've ever heard seen. Did you ever see him do the samurai? Oh, he was doing the whole of like Belushi did oh, all that. Oh. Wait, well, that's where Belushi got it from, Sid Caesar. Oh, really? It was insane. And his Italian was the best I ever heard. His Italian was oh. it was it's fantastic. You can actually Google Sid Caesar speaking four different languages at a Bob Hope. Uh, <laughs> they're honoring Bob Hope, and he gets out and starts in French and then German and then Italian, and then he ends up with the Japanese. It's phenomenal. Yeah. He's a, and he was the first, too. I mean, right right yeah. up there with yeah. s- sketch. I, I read his book. You know, I don't know if you saw his book. It's, it's okay. It's not great. But he, he talks about <laughs> at the end of the <laughs> Well, no, I mean it's it's, it's okay. I mean, some of the stories were good, but he, right. he was he was good with the accents. Maybe not. He so was much good with the accents, uh, but not, not with verbs the of, and, and the adjectives. He was sober uh, for a long time, and uh, his wife said, "You know, now that you're sober, we should travel." You know, you're retired, and he said, "Well, where?" He said, "How about Australia?" He said, "Yeah, I've always wanted to go there." And then he came to find out he had he had toured Australia. You know, one point in time he was so fucked up. He just remember he was there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just interested in in bitterness in our business, like how to avoid it. Because I work with Mickey Rooney, who was the most bitter human oh, being I, I ever with met. Mickey too. Yeah, I worked so with Mickey. so bitter, right? What, oh, what year was God. what year did you work with him? I worked with him. He he came up to me the last time I saw him. I was at Malibu. You know what was that restaurant? Tradenoy. Yeah. Sitting outside with some friends, and he came over. And he said, uh, you know, I'm trying, to, I'm, I'm trying to get a fucking show off the ground with Debbie Reynolds. You know, she's got the <laughs> hotel in Vegas, done very well for herself. I'd like to do Tugboat Annie with Debbie Reynolds. I can't get past these Jew producers. I don't <laughs> understand why they won't give me a- <laughs> Oh, he was like outraged. I said, Mickey, yeah. Mickey, he said, now, you know, these I don't I'm only coming to you because I know, you know, television producers. And I said, mm-hmm. yeah, but I said, I'll, I'll bring it up. You know, I was thinking I was with Ron Levitt, you know, Ron Levitt, and Michael Moy from uh, Married with Children. So I said, well, I'll, I'll bring it up. Mick, he's 90 years old, practically, you know, yeah. and <laughs> they're fucking with me. They're fucking with yeah. me. He said, Gene Kelly. Gene Kelly had just died. A national treasure, Gene. I knew Gene very well. Hmm. Judy Garden. Same thing. Look at who you're rolling with. You know, we learned a lot today, Ed. Judy Garland never owned a car. <laughs> that's he you do non sequiturs because they pumped her so full of drugs and he would talk until he couldn't breathe. <laughs> but he said he said that they call me he said Gene's a national treasure. That's what they're saying. And he was. And when I die, they'll say the same thing about me, that I'm a national treasure. They won't hire me for shit. Yeah, they don't treat him like a treasure. Yeah. He couldn't get a job. You know, he couldn't get a job. Ed, did you? Okay, sorry. You, you more with, with no, that's what. Did you ever did you ever run into an old time movie star you would have been blown away with that said they were a fan of yours, like Burt Lancaster yes. or something? Not Burt Lancaster. Not Burt. Okay, I, I'm just no, throwing him out. No, you know who but... it was? It was Ernest Borgnine. Oh, yeah. Stud. And and, uh, and that was great. And then James Arness. James Arness. But it, James it, came, Arness. it, it came in directly. It came from his brother. Hmm. You know, his brother who had Mission Impossible. What was his name? You know. Did you know he had a brother that was a, a different name? Oh, yeah. Yeah, something RNS. I, yeah. I had a... You, something it, the, the reason I thought about that is because I had a weird one recently with... Gene Kelly, which blew my mind because Lovitz, we were playing Vegas and he went to some party and he met Gene Kelly's widow. Yes. And, he's, and it, as John says, and she said, make sure you tell Dana that Gene loved his Bush impression. He'd tell everyone to be quiet when Dana was on. So just the idea that Gene Kelly knew who I was, was saying my name out loud, be quiet, Dana's on, <laughs> blew my yes. mind. David? It, well, yes, yeah, uh, I was at his house one night. Dana, I was invited. This woman that I knew was friends with his wife. I can't remember mm-hmm. her first name, but she was quite a bit younger, as you know, right? Yeah. And they lived on Rodeo Drive on the, in the oh. flats. So I because I thought nice. I want to meet, you know, I want to meet Gene Kelly. So I go 
And, you know, how it worked, they would have like once a week, she'd have dinners and invite various people mm-hmm. to amuse Gene, you know, to like, you know, keep him active mentally. And then he'd be upstairs and they'd have the cocktail hour and then he'd come down with a big, long dinner table. And uh, so I was introduced to him along with, you know, 15 other people. And he had no clue who I was. But he said, uh, O'Neill. Irish. I said, yeah, yeah. Where are you from? I said, Youngstown, Ohio. Youngstown, Ohio. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm from Pittsburgh. I said, I know that, Mr. Kelly. Yeah. Well, I was from Pittsburgh. Uh, I used to play these gangster clubs uh, in Sharon, PA. I said, oh, yeah. I had a girlfriend once that lived in Sharon, PA. I used to drive down there, you know, three or four times a week. He said, Sharon, you drove to Sharon. The fuck are you telling me you drove to Sharon? Sharon's 150 fucking miles from Pittsburgh or from Youngstown. I said, no, no, no. It's just over the line. It's Uh-oh. like 10 miles. Jesus, I, this fucking kid, he's from Ohio. He's telling me where Sharon, Pennsylvania is. He was mad. <laughs> and and, so and I'm, at other, I'm, at, I'm at the other end of the table. So, I mean, he's going over everybody else, to, you know, to tell me what a stupid asshole I was. <laughs> so I, I finally said to him, well, maybe there's two Sharon's, you know. There's not two Sharon's. God, he won't let you off the fucking now, hook. I'm going to make this short. He, he, okay. he stopped. I love he, this. He talked about a lot of other things, you know, Dan, Fred Astaire, great stories, phenomenal stories. You know, the guy knew everybody, the popes, you know, the whole thing. So at the end of the evening, where he walked every, he was very gracious now, you know, he walked everybody out to their cars valets and now it's my turn with my friend and he says uh he was calling me irish now you know hey irish Mm -hmm. you got off on the wrong foot but you know i like you i like i like something about you you know know, you're all right youngstown right irish (laughs) come back anytime anytime you tell so and so okay i go home and i had an assistant and i said get a fucking map a map a scale map uh-oh. Youngstown to Sharon PA and make it very clear and mail it to this or hand deliver it to this address and <laughs> Rodeo Drive. So he did. Two weeks go by. I thought this was a bad move, you know. And then I get a hand delivered note. I've got it right here. You could actually show it. Well, I, I, I could show it to you. Oh, we well, just read it's it, I guess. Gene <laughs> Kelly Station. It's Gene Kelly. Stationary, Gene Kelly. Uh, Dear Ed, they must have moved Sharon PA. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and and I'm, you know, I got it. Here. Ah, said, I love it. He said, "Listen, uh, the 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 Rolling Rock, which is a beer in Pittsburgh, the Rolling Rock and yeah. the Humble Pie are on me. Your friend Gene Kelly. Ah, great. So I've got that. I've said, of course, I framed it. Now, nice." I called his wife, you know, I pushed it, you know, I called his wife and I said, boy, that was, you know, I told her it's such a great, so gracious. You know, she said, Hey, that did not come easy. He was up there <laughs> pouring over his maps, motherfucking and cursing and things. <laughs> and finally he had, a, you know, he finally, he realized that, you know, he was wrong about where Sharon PA was. It's a great story though. Right. Yeah, well, I, I think that. that what I'm getting from today is behind the scenes, kids, people who want to get into show business, everybody behind the scenes is basically a guy who talks like this. What the <laughs> fuck's the matter with you? Yeah. Get over yes. here, you son of a bitch. Yeah. Even Gene Kelly singing in the rain. He's like, what the yeah. fuck? Get Everyone your head exactly. out of your ass, your your ass. prick. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Uh, it's just, that, uh, that's the, thank you for you talking know. to us. And uh, I have to tell you, I learned a lot that I learned that Ed, after 480 episodes, is more humble than I was after one 1-800 collect commercial. <laughs> and uh, he's a I tough... take away, Ed is nice <laughs> yeah. until he's not nice. Yeah. Right. And you never want to meet that guy. That's my takeaway. Well, that you know, I mean, look, now, who knows? I mean, it's like, you know, I'm, I'm to an age now where I better watch myself. But 
Yeah, I got money on you. Yeah. Don't worry. Yeah, no, you but know, it was that, it was just the way I, it was only it's just the way you grow up. You know, you just grow up a certain way and and uh and that's it, you know. That's it awesome. Kind of, I, I'm gonna start recording now. Yeah. Because we're so warm. Yeah, up. well that's that's really started. <laughs> um Ed, thank you, and I think this will uh this will make a good eight minute show. All right, bye guys. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> See you later, guys. Hey, what's up, flies? What's up, fleas? What's up, people that listen? We want to hear from you and your dumb questions. Questions, ask us anything. Anything you want. You can email us at flyonthewall at cadence13.com. Hey, David, we get letters, as you know, Mm -hmm. and fans of of the podcast like to ask us questions. This is from Robert Prince. Hey, guys. I've always loved the SNL opening credits montage and was wondering what your memories are shooting them. Do you have any say in the location or what you'd be doing during your part? Thanks, Robert in San Antonio. So what was your little video um, thing? I thought this question was about my vintage OP jacket. but On sale now wherever you find your jackets. <laughs> <laughs> wherever you find overpriced jackets. Uh, this is I like this because... The opening montage, it's always been pretty much the same. They pick a theme. It's always mm-hmm. a night shoot. Mm-hmm. You don't care because you just got an SNL and you got to pick out what to wear. And all. I wore my own shirt. Uh, mm-hmm. Sandler looked cool and I used to always bust his balls because he kind of turned the game. I go, no, no, no. Does a little, yeah. He's like, hey, <laughs> what's going on? What do you got going? <laughs> and, uh, and when I come, I'm like this, ha, ha, ha. Showbiz. I was like John Bonet. I really gave into it, but I. But you do a couple. So he put me in front of a bar or something with lights. Jim Signorelli, probably right. Jim Signorelli, probably. I had to just run around a corner and kind of run down a stairwell near a subway or something. Oh, is that yours? And then stop on a dime. And then I don't even know if I looked up or anything. I think we're just playing it like cinema verite. Yeah, every year they did a different type of theme. So yeah, ours I was, was an like, action figure. Mine was you were kind of what's stagnant. going on around town. <laughs> we had like twenty two guys to cover. So weren't you sitting on a bike rack and then you just turned a camera and go with thumbs up? No, I was in the basket. <laughs> ring 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 ring. <laughs> Dana pops out behind me and Dana Garvey. <laughs> <laughs> you were like E.T. You were in the basket up front and I was riding the bike. Yeah. It, it, E.T. It's phone sort home. of like uh, as, as in like Gilligan's Island. They go, Dana Carvey, Dennis Miller, and the rest. Gilligan's and then it's all of us. Island. Yeah, you know how they, they fucked the professor and Marianne? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They used to oh, go, I remember Marianne. Professor Ryan, Marianne. I'm Thurston Howell the third. I can't believe we're on this island. Gilligan's what was I that guy? It. Oh, he was great. Someone told me there's only like 12 episodes. I go, no fucking way. There wasn't no. that many, though. Bob Denver would not sit down for 12 episodes. <laughs> he wouldn't do that jack That dandy shit. was going to, yeah, it was, that was a great show. I love those 60s I sitcoms. I loved it. It was so simple. Damn it. Now it's uh, all bleh. So I like the opening <laughs> credits, but the sad thing was when I got there for my first show, I told the story when I did did my first Michael J. Fox impression. I think it was just a photo we did with Edie Baskin. So it'd say, I'm featuring David Spade. And they'd just show a photo of us Mm. uh, until we got in the real montage. But I did it and they forgot to put the photo up. I can't wait to yell at Kenny Among because all we do is say what a nice guy he is and he's the best guy in the world. But I know he feels horrible because David, (laughs) David, I forgot. So they didn't put me in so no one knew it was me doing it. So at the beginning of the show, my one time to be, and it didn't happen. And then the next year, I think I did the video opening there. That's all. Well, Lovitz was giving me a tour because he was on Saturday Night Live and I got on Saturday Night Live. So we're walking around, walking around 8H and here's where you get your changes and there's the stage. And Dom Pardo was there that day. And I was kind of nervous just seeing him and everything. I know I might have said this before, but okay. John goes, say his name, Don, say <laughs> it. You know, what do you mean? His name's Dana Carvey, say it. You know, I go, John, he doesn't have to do that. So then he does go, Dana Carvey, yeah. you know, and just gave me chills. I broke out into a cold sweat right. and I f- fit myself in a little ball and started sobbing. You got yourself into a shoebox, <laughs> I heard. You curled and The curled. nerves of that show, man. Oh. The noise. Just walking in there, it just gets you tense. Oh, um, you walk through there, it's like walking through the high school you went to on a Sunday and got afternoon. Beat up every day. <laughs> seeing all, well, yeah, you get shook down. We it put you up against the wall and give me your lunch money. And then our coach said, just start swinging. I don't care how big the guy is. Don Pardo once um, <laughs> stole money from me 
and Stole pushed me down and said, don't tell Lord. <laughs> I want your <laughs> lunch money. Come here, you little pussy. <laughs> 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 you got more than that. I know what you get here. <laughs> I'm Don Pond. <laughs> and I'll fuck you up. I'll fuck you up. Oh, and right. drop your trousers, David. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you for that question. <laughs> Sorry, now I'm going blue. What does that it. means? We're going to get sued. We're canceled, sued. OB jacket. This has been a podcast presentation of Cadence 13. Please listen, then rate, review, and follow all episodes. Available now for free wherever you get your podcast. No joke, folks. Fly on the Wall has been a presentation of Cadence 13. Executive produced by Dana Carvey and David Spade, Chris Corcoran of Cadence 13, and Charlie Finan of Brillstein Entertainment. The show's lead producer is Greg Holtzman with production and engineering support from Serena Regan and Chris Basil of Cadence 13. 